I want to record something that is both promising and interesting in terms of results. So I picked a new topic, a uh, sex symbol. By the way, in the previous recordings, I actually changed that error that was up here by um, where I had to reconfigure it every time I switch topics by adding a missing value. And so you've got most frequent value. When it has a missing on the string, I just had to replace the missing with the most frequent value in the column. And that was an easy way to basically say that when you start with this kind of column and it's missing, replace it with the most frequent. So it would be sex symbol all the time in this one. And you'd be able to, and, and you only do this when you want to pull the name of the topic. So no matter what topic is here, it's going to fill the whole thing with that one topic that appear, appears. And then it's going to be able to propagate that as a variable and go on from there. So now I officially do not have to mess with anything. I can go in and I could change this to publisher editor and it'll run straight through, right? But here's what it found. And this is what I say is promising and interesting. When I ran the models, this one, again, had a high false positive rate. But to be honest, in, in, in the kind of research that we're doing, the astro research, false positives aren't bad. It's the lack of true negatives that are bad. Um, in the sense that, remember, positives mean normal because the, most of the beginning data is normal. And then somewhere in there is going to be somebody marked as not normal, right? So you have to kind of take that with a grain of salt as far as what's positive and what's negative. It doesn't, it doesn't really matter. The category is flipped. Um, but but if your very first one in this table actually were marked with the trait, then it would it would reverse them. Doesn't matter though, as long as the trues are correct. That's what we're going for, and we want the rare marked trait to uh, to uh, be caught right because the data was so sparse. Only a few people were marked as actors. And we want, it when, we want it to be the case that when they were marked as actors, our model found that they were actors. And that's the rarer one. Anyway, here, the topic that I chose was sex symbol. And you see that it, this model here found two true negatives out of four. There were only four. And so it had a specificity of 50%. It turns out that we probably... Again, we probably don't want to run for longer than 10 epochs because it's going to end up overfitting the data and then the law of large numbers is going to tell it to just same model, mark everybody as zero. So that tells me something about the the depth of, of, uh, of analysis that we need. Apparently, you don't need a whole bunch of runs uh, scrambling them up so many ways in order to find a pattern, because if you run it too many times, then I guess large numbers is going to kick in and it's going to lose where it was accurate. And a lot of that has to do with the learning rate and everything. But this is the third time, the third time that epochs of 10 showed up in a model that actually found the what we were looking for. But I call your attention to this. Apparently, and, and again, the, the fact that we had 40 false positives. Oh yeah, they were a sex symbol and they weren't marked as that. Mm. I mean, in the astral world, and you're reading somebody's chart, what it turns out to be is that this thing is, is it, it promotes the trait. You could have it or you may not, right? So, so it's a potential. It shows up as a potential. Again, we're dealing with astrology here. So these 40 false positives um, saying that they had the trait um, doesn't, it, it's not as much of a bummer, as much of a, of, a, of a problem as people who did have the trait not being shown as having it, right? It's potential for these people. It's reality for these people. And we're hoping our machine learning model catches reality and whether it assigns potential to, I don't know, a 20% of the population. Okay. Whatever. It's lots of things of potential in an astro chart. So this 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 here is not disturbing. The 184 to the 40 is not disturbing. The 4 to the 0 is because these people actually had the trait. Anyway, 
What I draw your attention to, and the reason I picked up this recording again, is who had the trade. I mean, sorry, who the culprits may have been. I wired this such that it must run the logistic regression before it runs the loop. And here's what the results of the regression were. Oops, I have it filter as well. I really need to have this go from the labs, but positive coefficients, P less than 0.05. These were the culprits. Zeta in Libra, Hippodamia in Capricorn, Walia in Virgo, Betjea in Aquarius. What do these asteroids do? The one worth noting is Hippodamia, because Hippodamia in Capricorn, let me look at my own stuff from Laurentia. Here's what I said about Hippodamia. And this was the eyeballing version, right? My own Hippodamia uh, was, was in Capricorn, but here's, here's, here's what the interpretation was. Where you make good pro-social company, caps gravitate towards luxury or at least order. Uh, some of these things have specific sign interpretations. And it just so happened that Hippodamia's specific sign interpretation was for Capricorn. Uh, it's not always the case. Um, but you can see this. It gravitates towards luxury. And the logistic regression found that these, these things actually showed up as variables. Hippodamia specifically in Capricorn for kind of a pro-social thing. Zeta in Libra. What does Zeta do? Zeta, trait which encourages others to open up and demonstrate themselves. Okay, ignore this because my Zeta is in Capricorn. But Zeta in Libra, opening people up to demonstrate themselves in the context of a one-to-one -one communication. I don't know. Maybe that makes you attractive in some way. Can you, can you see that? Um, the logistic regression also found that Beth Jia in Aquarius and Walia in Virgo were significant. Let's see what Beth Jia does. Beth Jia, whoops, let me unhighlight that. Beth Jia is where you assemble a complex puzzle from dirty pieces, transform animal urges into other things in the context of social information. You you transform animal urges into other things in the context of social. And we are looking at sex symbol. Interesting. And lastly, there is Walia in Virgo. Let's see what Walia said. Walia. Publicly exposing your brand of power relations with people. Walia in Virgo is exploring, is exposing those power relations in the context of trying to reconcile things. Don't know what that means. Uh, it, it could just mean that my first interpretation of Walia was more eyeball, more public, because this doesn't really support, um, well, I won't say it support, but it doesn't, it doesn't align with the fact that this was the strongest coefficient. Walia needs to be reinterpreted. Um, if we really wanted to know what Walia is about, apparently my Laurentia interpretation, like so many of these, was clustered on the public attributes of people. But if we wanted to know uh, basically what, what, what Walia did, um, we might look at um, we might look at its actual word statistics. Now I'm not going to open that here because it's a whole other analysis. But the bottom line is that we have a logistic regression which helps us look at the specific asteroids doing things. And we have a machine learning model that, at least for a moment, in the first 10 epochs, found some math that was able to, to kind of get at this. The false positives can't really be helped. We had so many missings, right? That just because they were missing doesn't mean that people didn't find them attractive. So that, that was the problem with the astro uh, data that we're using. But the fact that Hippodamia in Capricorn um, and Zeta and Beth Jaya kind of seemed interpretation-wise to align with, with the tag and machine learning actually found something in terms of interpretability. We don't know what it found, but uh, 
we can always output the layers and at least look at some basic coefficients on that first layer of inputs to see if something got weighed down. Um, you know, if you, you went in here and you added an output, maybe that's, that's, that's part of what it is. I'm going to save this because I'm about to undo it. I'm about to break it. But, um, no, no, you know what? Rather than breaking it, let's just rerun it. Maybe I won't break my loop this way. This comes from here. Whoops. Goes in there. And this time, we're going to add an output. And we're going to output the hidden layer. I mean, sorry, the input layer. And see if we can get 117. Let's see if we can get some interesting results. Yeah. Run it. Now this is on a different model, right? But let's see what kind of results we get when we output the results of the input layer. Okay, get a bunch of matrix math, right? Interestingly, we get, oh, we get the prediction. Uh, that's one other thing. But here are all the coefficients that came in. Um, and I guess they were times each other. It's a dense layer. So I have no idea what you would do to interpret this, um, but it's probably some kind of binary, some kind of multiplication. And you can always go in and uh, basically experiment with some values, put in a bunch of 0.05s, sorry, 0.5s, and see what happens. I, I don't. I don't really get how to how to interpret this. When I learn it, I'll probably record a video on it. But the point is that apparently these 228 individuals did have their different layers multiplying out. Um, and you could look for correlations on what the, their asteroid locations were and uh, go from there. Interesting. Interesting findings that... Uh, the asteroids that were implicated down here actually align with the early observations and that at least one of the models was able to find two of the four people to whom the tag applied.